Okay, this is a basic explanation on Gumber. To make it easier, we just created a kind of a extreme scenario to say something, right? My deck has been placed at elevation 100. The width of the deck is one unit, right? The thickness of the deck is one unit. So basically this elevation is 99. The hunch is also one unit, right? As I said, kind of extreme, of course. Right? So basically the top elevation of the beam is 98. How do I set this up? Right? So uh, the way to set up this is to go to the beam definition. Now remember that these units are in uh, English units and on this example. So I just say that uh, the hunch, right? That piece of concrete is 12 inches at the beginning or at the end. Later, I will explain what this compute means. But then I just say that it's going to be 12 inches at the beginning, 12 inches at the end for all the beams in this example, right? Just to mention that the profile of this is flat. So the entire bridge is at elevation 100. So all across, we have this block of concrete that is 12 inches high, so one foot, one unit, all across at 100 foot or 100 units B, right? And everything is flat. So saying that, on uh, this option that I have, right? So I can just request, for example, the elevations reports. So I can get the beam elevation report on that. So saying that, that is the beam, it's 100 units long. And the elevations, as you can see, uh, at the beginning of the beam is, is right, right? Because remember, the deck is at top elevation 100, one unit thickness, so the bottom of the deck is 99. The build up, the hunch, the hog, is another unit. So the top of the beam is 98 all across, right? So that's that. And then that's what I mentioned, the, ho the hunch thickness is 12 inches or one foot, because that's what I set it up. So it's uniform too. So as you can see, the software is working, right? And the hunch elevation, right? So it's just right at the bottom of the deck, because the deck is at 100 minus one unit. So it's on the left side, and on the right side of that concrete block, it's elevation 99. So what it's talking about is, this is 100, this is 99. So here it's 99 and here is 99. And that's what this is talking about. Plus, right, he gave me the option, as I did his manual calculation to Give me the volume of that hunch, right? So I got the concrete units. So that is the simplest way to set these up, right? So it's just to prove that the calculations are, are working. Now, continuing to this extreme scenario, I just send this to analytical calculations and I calculate that the deflection of the beam is actually very extreme and I'm going to set it up to one foot. So 12 inches, one unit. Just to do that, I'm going to copy that to all the rest of the beams. So I just ungenerate, save that and generate the report. So what's going to happen now is computing these elevations, right? Let's zoom in on this, is that Again, along the beam, yes, the final deck elevation is 100. The screen elevation is 102. But then, as you can see, as the beam has cambered, has deflected, right, at the middle of the span, at the bottom, I mean, it's the elevation 98 that I'm supposed to get at the beginning of the beam, right? Let's come back to the report. So that's fine, 98. Right. But as, it, as this has deflected, I got the, my hunch two plus another one because of the camera. 
right? So I'm good. It's great height above the girder is two. Here at the middle of the span, right? My top girder is 98. Right? So basically I have at the middle of the span, as because of the deflection, I have no buildup of concrete on top of the beam. Right? It's supposed to be 98, but then I encroach it. And then basically I have zero hunch, zero hog on that. The beam is right below the deck. And this is something that you gotta check manually. Right? If this elevation, for example, shows 98, excuse me, it shows like 99.5, for example, this cannot be because my bottom of the deck is at elevation 99. And the top of the girder cannot be 99.5. So something is wrong with the camber. I have to recalculate the project. Right? So this is something that checks that you can. So here I can say, well, this project may not work because I have no build up. I got no concrete separation, free space between the top of the beam and the bottom of the deck. It's just matching perfectly. Right? So what I need to do then is, well, Come back to my beam layout. Right, come back to my beam layout and said that this 12 inches, one foot, one unit that I selected from the beginning and the end, it doesn't account for the camber properly. So I either too close to the bottom of the deck or I'm just encroaching inside the deck, which is bad. Okay, so that is that calculation. Now, let's go to a more than real case scenario, right? So let me cancel this and show you this. That this is the options that we allow for this, I would say, automatic calculation in which we can just specify in the same beam layout rather than specifying the hunch at the start at the beginning. I can specify what is the minimum clearance. So what is the minimum distance between the top of the beam and the bottom of the deck that I need to have this concrete. And then also I can enter the real or the expected camber that I'm going to get from my design. So these concrete buildup will be calculated and quantities will be properly taken care of, right? So there are many instances of this calculation because it could be complicated depending on the profile conditions, right? So I took this graphic from Florida DOT, for example, right? In our case that I'm showing you here, it's easy to compute because the profile is flat. Right, but then what happened? The profile is in the slope, or even worse, is on a vertical curve, grass, a crest, or a sag. So these distance, or this concrete buildup, or hunch, or hog, will change along the size of the beam, and I'm still trying to maintain a minimum space between the top of the beam and the bottom of the deck. Right? There are formulas that are internally calculated, analyzing four different cases, depending on the deck condition and the profile condition. Right? These are internally the formulas that we use and how to compute that. Right? Uh, the different scenarios and how to compute the quantities too, because these are the formulas that we use to compute the real amount of concrete that is going inside this uh, separation, right? So more than that, see, that's how we report the thicknesses of this specific hunch, right? And it's reported again. And why we have this left and right? Because that's what I was talking about on that buildup. See, that minimum clearance, for example, in this criteria, it says that the minimum separation, for example, here, According to this Florida criteria, it's got to be half an inch. So one centimeter, one and a half centimeter here, right? And then after that, depending on the cross slope, this space will change, right? This hunch will change. 
So we need to properly set up the elevations of the beam and all of that to obey this. Right? So then we can able to achieve this and give you that calculations. So how we do that then? So then we will need to use in my beam layout that option. Right? And so then I should go here on my beams and then now let's set it up the case scenario because look look what's gonna happen here. Right? I'm going to say though now I want the software to compute the actual thickness of that concrete. And I say the minimum clearance that I want to achieve, now let's do a kind of a real better case scenario, is going to be one inch. And the camber that I got, it's, let's exaggerate, maybe two inches. Right? So now look what's going to happen now when I hit OK. Oh, that's for one beam. Camber could be different for different beams. So look, it's still maintained here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and copy to all the other beams. Hit OK. So now look what happened with the scenario now. So now I'm obeying all these minimum distance of one inch, right? As you can see, the elevations have even changed too, right? And the top of the beam has changed. And now if this is flat again, this is all being calculated. But then now look at the report. Because if I do now quantities, right? So it's computing the real quantities here. So look. But now what I'm going to do, as I said, it has changed that. And then also, the camber elevation now has been computed because now I go camber here and I said now this is going to be two inches and I'm going to copy that all across the beams, generate, and I got the new elevation store. Right? But then what happened if this is the camber, right? And uh, I'm not violating anything, right? Because now it's where it's supposed to be. But what happened now if during my analytics, I assume on my beam layout that it was two inches, right? So, but then now I discover that it's one inch, right? So I will copy the beam and just generate. So with one inch, that will be the new camber elevations and the new elevations, right? But then these hunches are still set up with the or thicknesses. So then, kind of an iterative process, I should come back to my design here and say, look, I assume when I lay it out that I was expecting a camber of Two inches, but then when I calculated this one. So let me now set up the beams to all of this. And then the new calculation will be performed and the right quantities will be computed. So it's a mix between laying out and design or what design of it. So if you want to be, I would say, uh, very precise calculations, so then the process, again, would be to first go here, right, set up a compute option, the minimum clearance that's mandated by your standard, and assume a camber that you expect it to have. Let's see again, one inch on that, right? Send your software to design, and when it designs, if it returns one inch as your camber, so then you can ask for the camber report and select for one inch camber for all of them, right? Save it. And then when you generate the report, you will get the 
top of girder elevation, the straight above the girder, so you will not be violating uh, anything here, right? So your beam will not be encroaching inside the deck because it already set it up, right? And then to adjust the quantities, right? Then you will go here on your beam layout and define the camber that you got here. And it's the same on my case here. So when you do that, nothing will happen. But then when you go to reports now, right, you will get the right quantities, right, taking into account for that new layout. It could be minimal, but hey, it's going to be more accurate quantities. And then also your beam report will accommodate for that because on the beam report, you got the beam elevations, right, the top of the beams. The hunch thicknesses, right? As you can see now, is bearing across the the beam because it has been cumbered, right? And then um, it gives you that on the left, on the right side of the beam. Right. Here is the same because it's rectangular. But then, if the deck is in cross slope, you will have a different elevation here and here, right? But always maintaining the minimum clearance that you provide of one inch, right? And the new elevations being calculated. So this command is, I would say, extremely powerful on the sense that allows you to set up the minimum clearance and start with a preliminary camber that could be adjusted when you receive the design information to get the right the right hodge quantities right here. So again, this could be easy to track or to verify because my deck is flat. But if it's in cross slope or super elevation, that hodge thicknesses and elevations will vary along the beam. Uh, so and now you know how to manage punches and camera.